Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank every single one of you over here. Uh, in my wildest dream, I never thought people will actually pay and come see me speak. <laughs> so believe me, this is shocking. But more shocking than this was when actually Sharon approached me. And the first thing I thought of was how to run away. <laughs> and then the thing is, I'll tell you why it was like that. Um, the first thing is that I'm terrified. I'm like really scared of public speaking. You guys have no idea what's happening inside me right now. <laughs> but don't worry, I won't puke or anything. OK, second thing is even more interesting than this. Uh, I am really bad in English. Um, actually, I suck in English. In Form 7, in FSFE, I passed English by only four marks. I'm not kidding. My mark was 54 out of 100 in FSFE. Four marks made me go to university. Good thing was, I'm pretty good in my computer science and mathematics, and that's the field I actually went to. And <clears throat> The third thing that really I'm surprised that I'm actually here is I got lisp. You can actually tell by now. And my pronunciation of words is messed up. So please don't compare me with any other speaker right now. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, believe me. All right. Now let's move on as to why I'm here then. So Sharon told me three things when I met her. And that actually made me, <laughs> now believe me, it actually made me be a man, right? Man up, stand up, speak up. And that's where I am here. Now, <clears throat> moving next is the three things that she actually told me. And that was what Genda Project is all about. So it's about people who break the norm, people who live the dream, and people who actually step out of their comfort zone. And what I realized was that I'm one person who is actually doing all three. And then I said, wait, if that's the case, then I can be here and I can say something to all of you to relate to that particular three points. So let's look at the first thing, which is breaking the norm. And before I go and talk about breaking the norm, let's talk about norm first. So the norm part of things is, I, like every other person, went to high school, then went to university, get graduated, got a degree, and then I went and looked for a job. While I was doing a few jobs here and there, I actually did my MBA in MIT. And after that, I, six years back, I got an employment in Westpac. So currently, I manage application support. Uh, in Westpac, it actually involves software engineering. So my daily work is I go to different departments, and they come to me, and they come up, come up with a problem. Like, let's say the process that they are doing is slow, um, and so forth. So what I do is I actually analyze that situation and sketch a solution for them. And then I go back to my room, office, and over there with my team, I do coding. So that's my desk. And you can see programming over there. Another one is over here. <coughs> so that's in .NET. So I do coding, programming, and then we implement the solution into the department. And they actually start using that, which improves their process. An example will be a task that might take seven hours or six hours. We can code it and make it into a program that will do the exact same thing for 15 seconds. And I'm not kidding here. It sounds like I am, but believe me, I'm not. <clears throat> so, so generally, that's what I do, and then I go home. So that's norm. High school, graduate, walk. When you walk, start in the morning, finish at the afternoon, 6, 7 p.m., 5 p.m., go home, watch TV, eat, sleep. Next morning, wake up, go walk, whatever, whatever, it keeps on going. So that's norm. Six years back at Westpac. Still am at Westpac. One thing has changed. Three and a half years ago, I made a small change. 
which I will say, that's the day when I broke the norm. And how it happened is a very interesting story. So <clears throat> me and my friend Clement, we actually went to see Kula Film Awards. And so we saw the open category, and we saw the winners of the open category. And we looked at each other and said, are you for real? Like these guys won the open category. Because we could do 50 times better than that. So we said, OK, right, Clement, what we're going to do is, next year, we're going to make a short film. So Clement said, OK, right, cool, we'll do that. And then we bought, actually, I took a loan, right, and bought all the equipment. I'm going to tell more story about that later. OK? So you must be wondering, what the heck, like, take the loan just like that? <laughs> so, uh, so we took a loan, I took a loan, and then we got the equipment and everything, and so forth. So at that particular time, after the short film got done and all that, uh, I took some photographs here and there, and my friends told me that, Bao, it's really good. You should really do it professionally. Now, every person right now after DSLR, they are professional, by the way. Huh? So, but how to tame it, I guess, no matter the number of years of experience, or how much you have worked, or where you have worked, it's the quality of your photo that decides if you're professional or not. So I'm OK with that. Now, so what happened is I went into photography. And so that was when I broke the norm. What I did was during the day, I used to work at Westpac. Yeah. After five, six, I became a photographer. So every weekday, between five, to six when I'm home, till midnight or even later, I'll do this. That's editing photos at my home, right? Every single day, even till date, right? Those of you who know me, you know I'm not like making this up, right? And when it came to weekends, <laughs> when it came to weekends, this is what I did. That's me doing photography for Vo, Vo Dance Group, right? So every weekend, I'm out of my home. I'm here and there doing photography. And weekdays, and during the day I'm at work. After six, home editing. And that's how I became a photographer. And that's what I call breaking the norm. Now, the next few slides that I'm going to show you is my output, what I did, some of my photos. But before that, I'd like to share the actual story behind how I became the, a photographer and all. So uh, the struggle behind the photographer part of things. So <clears throat> let's go back to the place where me and Clement decided to make a short film. So we did that. Then I took some photos. Uh, our short film was done and all. And before I bought the equipment, this is before I took the loan to get the equipment. I researched for three months. I did crazy research. Like, you have to understand this. I never touched a camera before. Never did any course in photography. Never assisted any photographer. So I had no knowledge. But I was a movie freak. Right, so I had this feeling that I know everything about movies and I can make one. <laughs> okay? So what I did was, I said, okay, cool. And Clement believed me. So I said, yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I started my research. What camera is needed? What lens is needed? I can write here Stan and tell you he's using a 7200 f2.8 IS2 lens. Right? But that was after my research. <laughs> if you ask me before three months, I won't even know what it is, right? So yeah, well, so I did research, and I slept only two or three hours per day for three months straight. And then I made my list. This is the camera I want. This is the lens. So three cameras. I must have been in Fiji the first person to get a GoPro. That was in year 2013, March. Hardly people knew about GoPro at that time. So 
I made my list, GoPro, Canon 6D, and this and that and whatever, and the set of lens that this is what I need to get. And then I started looking for places where I can get it. Fiji, no way. Their camera you can buy in Fiji is like five years back generation camera. So that was out of the question. Uh, three times markup. <laughs> I'd rather go and bring my camera. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, I made my list, and then I started looking for places where I can get it. And then I got the stuff, right? My brother was coming, he brought few stuff. I got some stuff from eBay, and somehow I dodged the duty part of things. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then I got all my equipment. And then, because of my theory knowledge, everything I learned was through internet, YouTube, forums. I learned everything on my own. And then after that, I put that knowledge into practice. And then we made a short film, and then started photography and this and that. So here is some of the pictures that I have taken in the, next, in the last three and a half years or so. Um, one thing about it is, I've taken so many photos. If I start showing each and every photo, which is my best of the best, it will take a lot of time. So I only brought about 10 or 12. So let's go. <laughs> OK. So that's uh, Philippa Steele. And this photo was taken at uh, Pearl Resort. And we were doing a photo shoot for the outfit for the designer Anton. This is, I did a photo shoot. Uh, I'm uh, a photographer for Tapus as well. So this uh, photo shoot we did for the outfit in front of Tapus, and that's uh, Arpana, one of the models. That's uh, one of the most famous models in Fiji. That's Michaela Powell. And this uh, photo shoot was done for um, Dina Betten. And Dina Betten is actually an international designer. So when she came for Fiji Fashion Week, she actually hired me to do her photo shoot. This photo uh, was for Fiji Fashion Week promo shoot. This actually came as the front page of Fiji Times. That's the Vow Dance Group. This was for World Supermodel. Uh, I'm the director of photography for World Supermodel. And uh, this was held at Pell Resort. This is also at Pell Resort for the same event. This uh, Fiji Fashion Week asked me to do a winter shoot. As before me, they, no one has done a winter shoot for them. And so we went to museum, and that photo is taken in the museum. This is Vogue Group again. That's a winter shoot for Fiji Fashion Week. Um, my friends, uh, David and Ian and them, they started a blog, uh, Fashion Throne Fiji. And they were getting numerous um, complaints about that the content is not local. So they, I actually saw the comments and I approached them. I said, uh, guys, what we need to do is, I can help you, let's do a photo shoot. And let's put local people with local outfit and let's do a shoot. So that's from that particular photo shoot with uh, the model Annabelle Foresta and that's taken in Singatoka. Um, so, uh, Fiji Boxing were going for South Pacific Games. So I did a promo shoot for, the, for them, and that's one of the pics from there. This year in March, uh, the World Supermodel was in South Africa. So the next few photos are from there. And the last photo is of Vo. Now, after you can look at all that, and you saw what kind of photos I have taken and where, like I've gone to South Africa, this and that and whatsoever, you can clearly say that I'm living my dream. Now, another thing about that is, when I was at Westpac, and I was doing programming, that's something that I love. Right? I'm crazy about programming, and I don't think I will ever leave that. But I also had another passion, that was photography. My current day-to-day -day job did not become a barrier. 
Most of you people will think if you have another dream, your current job is your barrier. Because you're already there, you don't have time. That's not true. I made sure I take out time and I invest my money and time into that and I do whatever I can in that particular passion that I have. And if you are good in it, you will succeed. So another thing is living my dream. What I noticed was when you do good work, when you do it from your heart, people will appreciate it, you will get recognition, and at the end of the day, you are happy. My favorite quote is, happiness is the highest level of success. Now let's look at the word success itself, right? How will you tame it? Many people tame success as money. But imagine this, let's say you've got lots of money, but you are not happy. Is that success? So the thing is that if you are happy with adequate amount of money, obviously, then that's success. OK? So that's what that particular quote is all about. And my friend Sachiko shared an article. When I read that, then I realized that that's something that I actually am doing. And that was that every person, they need to write their goals in life. What they need to achieve in two years, three years, 50 years, 10 years, and whatever. Right? And then, if you're working daytime, you go home at 7 p.m. till 11 p.m. Between that, either one hour, two hour, do something related to that. And believe me, you will succeed. The only reason why we don't succeed is because we have goal, but daily we are so busy, we think that we are busy and we don't do anything about it. Finally, I would like to say, if you do what you are good in and what you love, success will always follow. Thank you, everyone.